Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to share your screen during a Microsoft Teams web app meeting. Now I have another video where I showed you how to share your screen using the desktop app, so the one you can just find on your start menu, right? Uh, but when you're in the browser, or maybe you don't use Teams very much, and you just got a link to join a meeting you know, in your email, and it opened up in a browser, and you can see the teams.microsoft.com uh, when you click on it, it's a little bit different, so I want to show you this process. Now, Megan's going to join a meeting using the web version or the Teams web app just by clicking on her calendar item there and clicking on the link, which uh, would basically take you to something like this if you clicked on the link uh, from an email instead. So same kind of concept. Uh, we'll click on join now. There we go. And Megan doesn't have a microphone, so we won't worry about that. But in the web app, instead of looking in the upper right for the share icon, it's actually going to be down here at the bottom. It looks similar, though. It's still a rectangle with the, uh, the up arrow there. So I'm going to click on that. And then you have to choose, do I want to share you know, uh, something on my desktop? Or is there a PowerPoint that maybe I've been working on lately? And you can see there's some more over here, too. Uh, but let's focus on these on the left. First, I'm going to choose desktop slash window. And then when I do that, I get to choose between my entire screen, which means everything that's on it, including my email, my Microsoft Teams client, uh, any web browsers I might have open. So we want to be kind of careful with that one, right? Um, or if I want to be super careful, I'm going to change it from entire screen to just window. So then I can say, oh yeah, I just want to share this one Word doc, and I, I want to make sure I don't accidentally switch and show someone my email, right, which might have something uh, sensitive on it. So this way I get to control, um, you know, the, the likelihood that mistakes would happen. <laughs> and I'll just choose the Word doc and then share. All right, so notice down here it says teams.microsoft.com is sharing a window. So now I can go down and I can show people this document that I'm working on, ask for their feedback during the meeting. And when I want to go back, I just go straight back to the, the meeting here. I can click stop sharing with the little pop up, or I can just use the stop sharing icon there, either way. And then it's, it's private again, right? So nothing's being shared. Now, uh, let me go and show you the other method. If I use the share icon, choose desktop or window, and I use entire screen, here, we'll go ahead and choose our monitor and share. There we go. This way, you know, everything that's on my screen, my email right now is being shared, that Word doc is now being shared, right? So you can see how that could potentially become problematic. All right, so I'll click on stop sharing there. And then one other thing to notice when you're using this method is that if you're going to be sharing, let's say, a video in your PowerPoint deck, or if it's going to be uh, maybe a video from a website or any kind of music, you'll want to make sure you check this box to share system audio before you click on share. Uh, and that way they can hear the, the music directly from your, your computer rather than through your microphone, uh, which can be uh, canceled out sometimes and just not sound great. All right, so with the web app only, there is a third option up here called Microsoft Edge tab, where you can choose just one tab instead of the entire browser to be shared. So same kind of concept, right? We probably don't want someone to see our Teams tab that might have chats and stuff on it, uh, but maybe we want to show them this one Microsoft Office tab, right, and show them how to use their OneDrive or whatever it is we want to demonstrate. So I'll choose one tab, I'll click on share, it switches me over to that tab, and I can see this little icon here, see that blue rectangle? It just means that I'm sharing that tab currently, right? And I can see a blue line around the contents of that tab, just basically a double reminder, right? <laughs> Showing me that's being shared. So when I'm done, I can click on stop sharing. There we go, I'll go back to my meeting here, and we'll look at one more method. So I'm going to click on share one more time, and if you watch the desktop app version, you're probably already familiar with this next one. But rather than you know present a PowerPoint full screen and then share your screen or the PowerPoint window, there's actually another option to make a more uh, inclusive and interactive experience when it comes to PowerPoint specifically. Now, if you don't see a PowerPoint that you've been working on uh, lately show up here like Megan does, you can click on Browse and then just look on your OneDrive or somewhere in Teams or upload something from your desktop or a jump drive maybe. Uh, but Megan's already used hers before, so it's already showing up, and she's just going to click on it. So this takes just a moment. All right, there we go. So this way is a little bit different. This is using what's called PowerPoint Live. So it, it enables your um, attendees to actually go forwards and backwards through these slides at their own pace. So for example, I may be into the presentation a little bit presenting you know, slide five, but maybe someone joined late and they're curious what was already presented that they missed. So they can actually use these forwards and backwards arrows you know, to here we'll go left one and we'll go look at slide four and see what maybe we missed, right? Here, I'll go to slide three, 
There we go. All right, now in the desktop app, there are a few more options that users get, like they can change the slides to high contrast, they can translate the slides to a language of their choosing. So that's pretty nice. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. Just a really nice ability to be able to move forward and backwards at their own leisure. Now, if you don't uh, want them to do that, there is a button right here, the little eyeball that you can click on to uh, make them stay with you, right? And maybe you turn that off after a while, like get through all the slides first and then turn that off so they can go back if they want to. That's up to you. Um, I usually just leave it on so people can go forwards and backwards as they wish. Uh, you know, some people are more interested in other uh, content than what you're going to be presenting later, or they might just want a refresher to understand the full context of what you're currently talking about a little better. Uh, one last thing I'll share with you about PowerPoint Live that I really like with the web app, or, or even the desktop app, is uh, if you have links in your slide deck, like right now on the thank you slide, Megan has this visit my website link. So users can actually click right there on that link and it takes them out to that site. So that uh, you know, if you have a survey you want them to complete or you want them to connect with you on social media or just like this visit your website, you don't have to copy the URL and go and find the chat and then paste that link in the chat anymore, right? And that's hard for users too because sometimes they're new to Teams and they're trying to find where the chat is and <laughs> it can be tough. So this ability just for users to focus on your slides the whole time and interact with your slides like that I think is uh, really great. So just a quick recap, I'm going to stop presenting here using the stop presenting button. There we go. Uh, we covered a few different methods. You can share your entire screen or desktop or a specific window, or in the web app only, you can share one tab that's open in your current browser. Um, or you can use PowerPoint Live specifically for PowerPoints to give that more interactive experience to attendees. So I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, let me know.